From the University of Southern Queensland, this is Unleash Your Career. I'm Spencer Housen, and here is Lou Bromley. Hello, Lou. Hello, Spencer. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Spencer, I want to know how you use social media to support your career profile. Wow. You're asking me that straight up. I am, sir. I am. Uh, I would say that uh, social media, as someone who wor- has worked in the arts... Um, in radio for a quarter of a century, that social media is uh, a way of promoting your personal brand. That's That would be the key thing that I would say, uh, because your employer then, you might have 50,000 followers, for example, on, on Twitter, and your employer might say, goodbye, farewell, but you've got control of talking to your 50,000 fans or followers still. Now, you're a blue-ticked, verified Spencer Housen on Twitter, so... Mm. Do you, how many followers do you think you have? Just over 50,000. You, you weren't kidding. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't think I've cracked the four figures yet on Twitter. Um, but, you know, there's always goals to have for 2017. What, what's interesting, though, about the 50,000 figure is you, there are um, apps now or, and, and websites that will analyse those followers to see how many are genuine and how many are not. Exactly. Yes. Find the bots. Yes. Mm. We're going to be talking a little bit about using social media beyond, you know, tweeting your favourite Ashton Kutcher tweet beyond my football team did really well on the weekend types of things or sharing things that you may have seen or even beyond my kids are doing cute things and I'll make sure the grandparents get tagged in a post. So I've got two guests today who are going to talk about that but a little bit more about me because I'm very conscious I didn't really do much of an intro in one of our first shows. I'm just this career development person, quotation marks. But uh, half of me is career development. The other half of me is actually marketing communications and most recently journalism, how I know you. And I used to do a lot of freelance work managing social media channels for different companies or people and copywriting. So how do you engage people out there? So we're bringing a lot of things that are lose work altogether in this topic for today. And I want to introduce to you to my guests in studio. I am looking at her right now. Hello, Jenny. Jenny Ostini is here at USQ. Jenny, tell us a little bit about what life is as an academic for you here at USQ. Well, that's a bit scary. I wonder if my boss is listening. But no, um, so I teach professional studies here, which is a postgraduate program, masters and doctorates for people who are interested in understanding their workplace, their problems they encounter, and just really um, doing things better. Um, And I have been a community correspondent with Lou. I've had many varied careers. What do they call it? A portfolio career. It's come back in vogue. Not not a checkered work history, a portfolio career. (laughs) And I've also got Susan on the line. Susan... Are you there? Hello, Lou. How are you? I'm very good. Susan, you are a writer, a journalist, and you're also an editor, and I'm going to throw this open to you to correct me. You are a USQ alumnus or alumni. Which one should I use? Well, there's only one of me, so... So which one is it? (laughs) But if you're referring to the alumni as a group, it's alumni, so yes. This is why people have started calling calling alums alum. An alum. alum. It's probably a very American way of doing it, but it kind of works. Yeah. I almost did that today too, and I thought, no, I'm going to throw it open to Susan because I knew she'd it's know. It's like affected, affected and impacted. Now everybody uses impacted because they can never work out whether it's affect or effect. That's very true. And you can see why I got Susan on the show because she's damn good at what she does yeah. as a writer and editor. Uh, Susan, you're a mature-aged single parent when you decided I'll go to USQ to do journalism, and I'm going to throw the first question open to you. What prompted your um, thoughts around making a career change? Well, um, when I separated from my husband, I had been working with him for quite some years, and so I had no... I, I was that generation where we still... We sort of attached our wagons to our husbands in many ways and we were there to do the dinner party for his work colleagues and all that kind of caper, which has all gone out the window, thank goodness. (laughs) So, yeah, I'd hitch my wagon to him. I had worked in his business because I was a tax deduction. (laughs) So when we separated, I was no longer a tax deduction. Um, I I needed a piece of paper to say I could do what I knew I could do. So... I actually picked USQ because of it was just such a really handy place for me up in Toowoomba with two small children. And um, we'd moved from a very remote area, and I 
didn't want to scare them by bringing them into Brisbane. When I say remote, we had no door locks. We, there was no escalators. There was no lifts. There was no traffic lights. So for them, it was a big adjustment. So moving to somewhere like Toowoomba was perfect. So that's where we, why I did my degree, yeah. And since graduating with journalism, you've seen massive change across journalism industry in general and media. The rise of social media in terms of promoting your work, how important is that to you? Oh, I, I, I don't think my business would exist without it because, I mean, you're a, if you're a freelancer, well, I actually have a, a beautiful sort of, um, you know, I'm part, full, uh, part-time at a, a gig where I get paid very regularly, which is lovely, and then a couple of days a week I freelance still. And if you're a freelancer, you're sitting in your room at home and no one knows you're there. It's, you know, you, you, it's, um, you've got to tell people that you do what you do and you've got to get your message out. And so social media is, is, as Spencer said, it's your personal brand. It's a very cost-effective way of getting a message out. And you, if you're a bit careful, you can build up quite a good following. Um, I tend not to sell myself. I don't go out and say, I am an editor, pick me, pick me. I tend to do it in slightly different ways. Um, in such, I've got three key social media uh, Facebook pages that I use for my personal work. And um, I kind of work around all three in different ways and, and putting different types of posts up. So my right now post will have all sorts of um, information about publishing, editing and writing. And that's purely what it is. And, and sometimes a little bit of arty stuff that interests me. And then I've got two blog pages, which are um, posts on there, uh, reflect what are posted on my blogs. And that's basically my portfolio of writing so people can see what I do. I always consider your blog posts, so Secret Brisbane and also Right Now, um, to be your way of showcasing this is what you get when you engage Susan to do exactly, some writing yeah. for them. And there's the naked editor now. There's a new one. Hello. <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> the logo isn't me. <laughs> but yes, the naked editor, I, I actually just started because Secret Brisbane has been going great guns, but um, there's stories that I wanted to put somewhere else that didn't really fall under the secret Brisbane umbrella. So naked editor, editor it is. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk slow and in a Barry White deep voice talking about the naked editor. I don't know why. Um, why don't you use other um, social media channels or which ones okay, besides well, Facebook I, I, do you I use? think um, for me, um, I just wanted to pick one and do it well. And so I pick Facebook. Well, I, I say one because I don't. I use, also use LinkedIn, which is also social media in a different way. But um, I just wanted to do it well. And, and tweets didn't really do it for me. Um, I wanted to say a little bit more about some of the things that I was saying. So, yeah, 140 characters didn't work for me. Although I think perhaps I might start using Twitter a lot more. I'm certainly using it in my, my part-time role at um, another university in the area that we won't mention. <laughs> The one we can't name. Now, the Jenny, you're a name. big tweeter. Um, so I use it a lot for that. So I do, I do use Twitter. Um, but for me personally, it, it, it didn't quite talk to my demographic in the same way that Facebook did. So I think you need to pick carefully what you're going to do and do it well rather than trying a scattergun approach where you just spread things across Instagram and across Twitter and across you know everything. So, you got so some, that's what I do. Hmm. Yeah, you got some really good hints of what we're going to talk about because I'd like Jenny Ostini who's also here talking social media to build your career profile tell us a little bit about social media use for early career researchers and why it's important it's important because in a way university lecturers don't have like a permanent career they're not just getting a job and being there forever sitting in their ivory tower in a way um Academics are subcontractors who have to look after their own business. So if you think of yourself as a small business where you're having conversations with people, you're interacting, you're staying abreast of new ideas so you, you know what people are interested in, particularly for me because my research is about people and how they use technology. So I really need to know what's going on. And that's an obvious strategic link there yes. between using social media and therefore talking about it. Do you use it also to engage the media so people can see thought or what the latest research might be in a particular space? I don't really. I use it more as a way to amplify the ideas of what's going on out there because I don't have the time to read everything. I don't have the time to be on top of every 
idea, book, new article. But there are, you know, there's an army of smart people out there reading stuff and doing stuff and tweeting about it, for example. And so this is how I managed to kind of keep abreast of what's going on. So what social media channels do you use? So I use um, Twitter for myself mainly. I use LinkedIn a little bit professionally. Um, I use Facebook a little bit, but not very much, mainly to be part of groups that I need to be part of. And I've blogged. So LinkedIn, just for a second, let's put the spotlight on that. How do you use LinkedIn for your work? LinkedIn is where I've kind of gathered together all of my less academic work because my work crosses the boundaries between academic and applied. It's a place where people can go to and see, okay, who is this person who's saying she has something useful to talk to us about? And so it's there. I have a, a profile. Excellent. Susan, I'd like to know a little bit more about how you're using LinkedIn as part of either networking or putting yourself out there to the market. Mm, yes, I, I I don't um, engage in um, sort of physical conversation so much on LinkedIn. But what I do do is obviously I have a, um, my CV up there with my portfolio, a bit about what I do, what I have done. Um, and then I have it linked to my blog so that when I publish an article on my blog, either one of them, um, it will automatically get posted onto my LinkedIn account and onto my Facebook account. And I think it can also go to others as well, but I just have those two selected. So it keeps, it keeps my page on LinkedIn looking fresh. It looks like I am keep doing things. I haven't just set it and forgotten about it. There's things happening. And um, it, it makes you, you, you go up the ratings quite a bit if you're in, you know, um, always putting new stuff on there. So that's what I do with LinkedIn. Mm. Can I ask a LinkedIn question? Because yeah. of, of all of you, do you, what happens if someone asks to be a contact and you don't know them? Should you always say yes on LinkedIn, given that it's a professional thing? It's like someone giving you a business card, Jenny. I, I don't, I have to say. I, okay. I take a look at the, the profile of the person and if they've got you know, four and a half thousand followers and they're clearly wanting to sell me a product, well, I definitely... <laughs> so that's why you wouldn't, because I was going to say, you, don't, you never yeah. know who your next employer is going to be. Well, that's right. So I just tend to quietly ignore those. But um, it depends. If it's someone I think I would have something, you know, useful to be in contact with about, or I think that, you know, either of us could be useful to each other down the track, then yes, I would. Um, but I would investigate them first. I don't just say yes, regardless. What about I'll you, Jenny? I'm kind of funny in that I will not link in if I don't know the person um, because I see it as my network, yes. something that I use and I like to use it to keep up to date with you know who's getting new jobs, who's doing new things. So for me it's about do I know them? Also, you, What if you know them but you don't particularly like them? Oh, then you accept so that you, you can do. find out what they're up to. Okay, all right, yeah. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Should I send you an invitation? <laughs> That awkward moment when. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm a bit of a set and forget with LinkedIn and I am going to fall on my sword and confess that because here's the career coach come career advisor saying that she doesn't pay much attention to it. But um, it's, that's deliberate because I'm not using it to get employment necessarily right now. So I like to put it on ice when I'm not looking, lest that I have to be doing the... I'm not interested right now type of thing. So, so if ever we see you ramping up your LinkedIn, it means you're um, yeah, unhappy with work? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> probably but, um, that applies for everyone probably. I've got a lot of random requests sitting in LinkedIn, which I politely but quietly ignore. Again, like Susan said, I'm not interested in being peddled workshops or uh, books, that kind of thing. When they see that you work in careers or education, they're definitely onto you to try and buy my stuff push this onto your, um, your clients and your demographics. Uh, and I politely ignore that. Yeah, but I apply that rule to Twitter and I apply that rule to Facebook. But the thing well. with Twitter is you don't have to follow them back. They can, so if you have an open account, they can just follow you. Yes. And Facebook, they can, they can follow you without you being friends and vice versa. But I yes. think with LinkedIn, yeah. you have to connect both ways, don't you? And that's why it's a little bit unique that way. Yes, and yes. The other thing with LinkedIn, um, for a freelancer like myself, is I have had quite a bit of work come through that channel which is worth bearing in mind as well and that's a really good point Susan because you were talking about know, know your demographic know your audience I don't get any work through LinkedIn I've got one job in 20 
well, I was going to say in 20 years, but LinkedIn has been hasn't been around that long refresh since about 2010. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Better go and refresh your LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, but I'm deliberate there. Um, Facebook and Twitter are far more important to me with some yeah, of my well, private work yeah. that I do. And it's really about knowing your demographic, though. So for what works with one person doesn't necessarily mean you just go and copy what somebody else is doing because it could no, be a different audience. No university is going to hire you from LinkedIn. You know, no. it's all about you have to go to them and apply for jobs. Especially if it's a formal process. Yes. yes. Yep. Although I will say I've had um, fellow USQ staff check out my LinkedIn profile and that's the creepy thing about LinkedIn, isn't it? You sort of know and then do you have to pay or something to to see who it is that has checked your account and all that? I have my profile private, so when I'm stalking you, you won't know it. Oh, that's how it is. I see. Okay. So it was you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go premium with LinkedIn, but really if you're not a recruiter, I really wonder why you're paying um, something, a social media channel for that. So as someone who's looking for work or you just want to be able to connect with your industry, I highly recommend keep it free until you see real value about why you're paying their money to do more work for you. So, yeah, that's a really good point, actually. What happens? What, what do you unlock when you hand over the cash, so to speak? Magic. <laughs> Susan, I just want to ask one last thing about what you were saying about know your demographic, know your audience. What sort of research did you put into it about why Facebook was the right audience for you for what you share on your blogs and your content? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I didn't actually do any... Um, res- yeah. No, I didn't do any physical research as such. It was, um, it was more of a feeling that uh, when you look at um, the networks on Twitter for the kinds of interests I had, they weren't really happening there, whereas... For politicians, for researchers, it was, you know, a lot of that's going on on Twitter. Uh, Politics, a lot of politics on Twitter. Um, But for me, it was just wasn't things that I was connecting with, whereas on Facebook, it was more relevant to me. So that's why I decided to go with that. Mm. And you have to... A lot more words that you can it share. It wasn't as scientific. A <laughs> Sorry? Well, I was going to say, you've got a lot more words that you can share on Facebook to match with well, the exactly visual. Well, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And, and if you're a writer, I mean, okay, there is a sp- much a skill writing 140 characters, but it's not the kind of writing I do. So, um, you know, I'm telling stories and I wanted to do it in more than 140 characters. So, for me, Facebook really works well. Life moves fast. At the University of Southern Queensland, You can study when you want and how you want. Because we care about you, with personalised support throughout your entire learning journey, whether you choose to study on campus, online, full-time, part-time, or a combination to suit your busy life, visit the number one Queensland university provider for online study at usq.edu.au slash your future. That's where you'll find your future, your way. I have a question for you both. Now, Jenny, I'm going to give you the proverbial microphone for the second. Do you have a career-related mentor? I do, yes. And how did you find them? Um, It was informal at first. It was just someone who I clicked with professionally and who I saw doing some of the things I wanted to do. So I approached her and said, you know, can you be my mentor? Let's, Let's meet for coffee. And then when USQ was running a formal mentorship program, we signed up together so that we could get you know, some cred for it. And then we've come out of that now and we're still having that relationship where it's just someone who can tell me what are the things that I need to do that matter and what I can safely ignore. Great. Um, so yeah. just really giving me that wisdom about, okay, yes, you might hate doing this, but you need to do it. This you can safely say, yeah, don't worry about it. So it just really helps me to focus my efforts and also someone, you know, who's been through the journal rejections, you know, all of that, who can just say, you know, let's have a drink and get on, keep moving. Can I ask how often you then connect with your mentor? We would talk on the phone probably once a week, not formally. We um, follow each other on social media, so we flick each other things that we might be interested in and... We would probably see each other every couple of months. So they're, they're a friend as well? Yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah. A professional friend. Yeah. That's what I'm going to ask Susan now. Susan, do you have a professional friend mm-hmm. or a mentor? I don't, no. I have made it up as I've gone along. <laughs> I mean, I've had people offer me some great advice, which I take on board. Um, 
and, and you know, things like if you're going to go into journalism, for goodness sakes, read a newspaper and read the ones that you don't necessarily like as well. Read widely, think critically, um, don't accept facts at face value. But in terms of a mentor per se, no, I can't say I really have. I'm a bit of a sad sack there. Obviously, I'm friendless. Oh, <laughs> if you'd like oh. to be Susan's friend, call now. <laughs> five, five, call five. Now. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't had a, I haven't, I really have made it up as I've gone along, um, starting a career in, you know, mid to late life and, and just kept my head down and never given up. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you've received some pretty good career advice along the way. That's because I've heard about it over coffee when we've been yeah. in mentoring type coffees ourselves, supporting ourselves. Tell us about some of the best career advice you've got. Well, I think um, in a, a, a freelance role, I think being as adaptable as, dare I say, agile, um, you know, broaden your skills as much as you can. Uh, so that you've, you know, you are, you're able to pick up jobs where someone says, you know, I need this document setting out in InDesign. Well, yes, I can do that. That's not a problem. I need this photograph tweaking in Photoshop. I need, um, I need you to be able to lay out a book for me. I want a, a full structural edit, or I want just a copy edit. I want you to write a story about this person, and I want it in three different formats for, you know. Um, a media release for a, a feature article and for a Facebook post. And so that you can do all those things without even blinking. You need to be, I think, very adaptable. Jenny and Susan, I'm going to look at Jenny first. Have you used social media to find jobs? No, not really. Um, I've used LinkedIn to look at job ads, but almost all of my work outside the university has been water cooler jobs where someone said, hey, do you know someone who can do that? And I've said, Yes, I can. Um, so I'm not a very good advertisement for social me getting a job via social media. But it's good to do a shout out that it still works. The analog chats where you're getting together regularly with colleagues, we call it the water cooler. They do exist still yes. in some workplaces. That's good to know. Susan, do you pitch for work via social media or have got jobs via social media? Well, as I said, I have been approached for work on uh, LinkedIn. Yep. Uh, Facebook, no, I haven't. But I regard Facebook more as a billboard. It's um, it's about me creating interesting content that then people will associate with my name so that when they want someone, they will go, ah, oh, now I remember that person. And or, you know, they see me around the place and go, oh, yes, I've seen some of the stuff she's written or I've seen some of the stuff she's edited or been associated with. So it's all about visibility. So I think um, to think that you're actually going to get work directly through Facebook is probably, we, I'm sure it happens, but it's not happened to me. <laughs> but it's just, can I just say, like as someone who this year has gone from working, um, you know, full-time public service for, for 25 odd years to having a portfolio career um, this year, that it, I've picked up, I've picked up some works and like voiceover work directly from social media, including Reddit, by the way, which we haven't mentioned so far. Yeah, we've been but, doing the top three, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Yes. But that's... and so someone came to me through Reddit, and that's the thing. You're if you're on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these, you're making it just as easy as possible for someone to contact you. Whereas ten plus years ago, they couldn't have contacted me unless they knew someone who had my number. Yes. And and so who knows whether the jobs, the exactly. uh, the bigger jobs that I'm doing now, including this one here and other things that I'm doing, whether maybe the social media profile actually helped that anyway. Yes. If, if not actually yeah. getting oh, sure the does. approach via yeah. social, yeah. Yes. And can I pick that up? It's If you are doing something like writing a piece for the conversation or any of those, people need to know how to find you then. And I always say to academics, if you want to put your work on the conversation and you don't have a Twitter handle that someone could just flick something to you, they're going to go to the person who does to do the radio interview to do something else. So, you know, you need to be findable and you need to be having those conversations out there. And while, like Susan, how you said you've never got work directly, we're often tagging each other in things in closed Absolutely. Facebook groups and things we see just for our, our own knowledge about what the freelance gigs are that are going out there who might be looking for something because you never know if you've got that something just waiting to go. But Thanks. I've got a question first for Susan. Where have you seen social media done badly, where it's a turn-off? Like, what are your tips about doing it well? 
Um, I think for me, social media has to be genuine. Um, you know, I, if people try to shove things down my face, then, you know, really, I'm not interested. I try and keep it, for me, I'm, I'm not a, a comic or anything like that, so I'm not doing funny Facebook posts. I'm doing things that I think are interesting to me, um, which is probably very selfish, but I'm sure I'm not alone in finding them interesting. So that's kind of how I work on it. So, um, yeah, I don't think... Um, you know the, the really bad selling adverts on there really just when you when you get you know you go onto something and then you have to click through a thousand pages to get to the end of the story and I just think no, no I'm not interested in that yep too busy to click yes yes Jenny what have you seen done badly or what turns you off and what are your tips for doing it well if you think of social media as a broadcast medium where you're the authority you know spreading your wisdom to the masses that's going to turn people off. And a lot of academics do that. They're like, I'm Dr. So-and-so, and let me tell you, you know, what the truth is. People aren't there for that. You know, they can go to Wikipedia and find information. They're there to have a conversation with you, have a chat, engage with you. There's also the very amusing humble brag where, you know, you're going to some international conference and you just drop that little picture in of here I am waiting at the airport lounge on my way to Keynote at uh, wherever. The airport lounge or the airplane yes. wing. Yes. That kind of turns you off. When, when you get the sense that it's about embiggening yourself, then you really get turned off. But when you get the sense that it is authentic conversation, interaction, I think then that becomes a better place for you to be. Also for me, it's around a support network of people who are parents, who are changing careers late in life, who have these experiences that they're willing to share with you, where you can say, you know, oh, I'm not sure I should be doing this. And they're there, they're a network to support you. We've got some LinkedIn workshops that are coming up in October, and you can get on there to Access Hub to register for those multiple dates. You can even do it via the web. You don't have to leave the comfort of your living room or your laptop. You can zoom in to find us there. Susan and Jenny, I've got one last question about using LinkedIn. How do you like to be approached by someone who might want to make a connection with you, but they don't know you? How do you want them to do that? What's uh, less you, creepy? Do you want me to answer that first? Yeah, go for it, Susan. Jenny desuperately does, yes, looking at the face. Let Jenny, because I don't really have an answer to that one. <laughs> no, neither of you does. Well, I think generally just Google the person and find out yeah. where they are, yeah. where they're hanging out, and approach them that way. I've had some pretty creepy approaches. Don't say, hey, I think you're really pretty and I want to get to know you. Oh, that's always <laughs> On it. LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, yes, On LinkedIn. that's pretty creepy. <laughs> Or the divorce serviceman yes. Uh, oh, yes. fake profile. Yes. Oh. I'm going through a certain period of life where I'm attracting oh, a lot of retired I thought I was the only servicemen. person getting those. I'm really disappointed. No, they're all coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for me, if you Google me, you'll find me on Twitter. You'll find me, you know, my email address. I'm very easy to get hold of. And Susan, how, do you, how would you like someone to approach you? What's not creepy? What's engaging? Well I, well, I think just the normal way, <laughs> just I'd like to contact you. Or, you know, I think that's fair enough, isn't it? I'd, I'm, I'd, yeah, the, the servicemen, you know, divorce servicemen, I don't, don't like that at all. And, and as Jenny said, the, the, creepy, the creepy approach, not good. Yep. Um, no. <laughs> now, Spencer, you were telling us something while we were listening to songs about how you could tell who of your followers on Twitter in particular we're genuine, but this applies to finding out if it, you know, that retired US serviceman who's divorced is actually a bot or some sort of fake account. How can you actually find out if these requests are real? Yeah, and I know Jenny probably will be able to throw in some additional info on this as well, because all I did recently was I got to the 50,000 mark and I was curious, and there is, I forget what it's called, but it was it's easily searchable, and it was a website, and all I had to do was put my name in, and it took a sample, for free, it took a sample of my followers and based on that estimated how many of my followers are real and how many are not but if you paid it would actually go through all your followers but then you're giving access to your account and I didn't want to anyway um, so it's about a third of my followers are real people so 16,666 thereabouts um, are real people which means that 50,000 figure suddenly not so impressive uh, but I figure you know, if you go to this particular website it gives you some other recent searches that it's done and a lot of people have found exactly the same thing 
You could buy some more followers. They're quite can, cheap I know, online. I know you can. I know you can. But you were saying, Jenny, before you follow people back, you, you I go do and have check. a look. I have a look at them. I also use unfollow, I think is what it's called, which you can set for different parameters to say, you know, who hasn't tweeted in three months, you know, and you can just unfollow on the basis of that. So I recently unfollowed about 300 people just to clean up my life. So right. I, I condoed my follower list. It's the war on fake followers. <laughs> I really want to thank Susan and I really want to thank Jenny. Thank you for coming in today, either virtually or in person, to be a part of our show. Spencer. Now. Susan Pryor, Jenny Ostini and Lou Bromley and I'm Spencer Housen. Thank you for listening to Unleash Your Career. Now, if you know anyone who could benefit from the information in today's episode, invite them to discover us as well. Unleash Your Career is produced at the University of Southern Queensland Springfield Campus.